The Sahara Desert, a vast and seemingly endless expanse of scorching sand dunes, has long been synonymous with desolation, where life struggles against the harshest of environments. But imagine this, parts of this desert, long considered barren and inhospitable, are now showing signs of transformation. Vegetation is creeping back, landscapes once parched are now dotted with greenery, and life is returning to areas that have been dry for millennia. What could be causing such an unexpected phenomenon? Is this a fleeting occurrence or a sign of deeper environmental shifts? Recent scientific observations suggest that the Sahara, the largest hot desert in the world, is undergoing a surprising transformation, driven by a combination of climate change, human efforts, and natural cycles. The idea of the Sahara greening challenges our perceptions of deserts as static wastelands and raises fascinating questions about the future of our planet. Today let's delve into the factors behind this remarkable transformation, exploring how the desert's past might hold clues to its future, the implications for local ecosystems and communities, and the potential long-term consequences for the region and the planet as a whole. Prepare to rethink everything you thought you knew about the Sahara Desert. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Sahara Desert, spanning across northern Africa, is the largest hot desert in the world, covering an area of approximately 9.2 million square kilometers. Looking into the past, what's interesting is the Sahara Desert was not always the arid lifeless expanse it is today. Approximately 10,000 years ago, during a period known as the African Humid Period, the region was much wetter, with a climate that supported lush vegetation, large lakes, and abundant wildlife. Archaeological evidence suggests that human civilizations flourished in the Sahara during this time, benefiting from fertile soils, rivers, and plentiful resources. The African Humid Period was driven by changes in Earth's orbit and axial tilt, which affected the distribution of solar radiation across the planet. These changes led to an increase in monsoon activity in northern Africa, bringing much-needed rainfall to the region. As a result, the Sahara was a savanna-like environment, with grasslands, forests, and diverse animal species, including elephants, hippos, and giraffes. However, around 5,000 years ago, the African humid period came to an end, and the Sahara began to dry out, transforming into the arid desert we know today. This shift was gradual but dramatic, as vegetation disappeared, lakes dried up, and human populations migrated to more hospitable regions. The desertification of the Sahara has been a defining feature of the region for millennia, but recent developments suggest that parts of the desert are experiencing a reversal of this trend. Recent scientific studies and satellite imagery show that parts of the Sahara Desert are undergoing significant changes, with areas that were once arid now experiencing greening. This phenomenon has sparked curiosity and concern among environmentalists, climatologists, and local communities alike. Satellite images released by NASA show pockets of plant life popping up all over the Sahara Desert after an extratropical cyclone drenched a large swath of northwestern Africa in September 2024. According to the NASA Earth Observatory, treeless landscapes in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya, areas that rarely receive rain, are now seeing traces of green sprouting up. At the same time, lakes which have long been dry are now filling up, such as one in Morocco's Iriki National Park. Past research has shown that it is not wholly unusual for the plant life to sprout in the Sahara when a deluge of rain pours in. According to scientists, with exceptional rainfall events, the desert dunes become these incredibly verdant and flowered fields where the plants will just instantly grow for a short period of time to take advantage. Usually, between July and September every year, rainfall north of the equator in Africa increases due to monsoon season. Such stormy weather occurs when the tropical air from near the equator meets the hot, dry air from the north of the continent. This boundary is called the Intertropical Convergence Zone. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center, since mid-July, 
The intertropical convergence zone has been sending storms into the southern Sahara. While some degree of rainfall is normal due to the monsoon season, it is unusual for the intertropical convergence zone to reach as far north as the Sahara. According to NASA, the northward displacement of the storm track helped a developing system dump a year's worth of rainfall in some areas in just a matter of days. The system formed over the Atlantic Ocean and extended far southward, pulling moisture from equatorial Africa into the northern Sahara. Several factors have been identified as contributing to the greening of the Sahara. While some of these factors are natural, others are human-induced. The interplay between these elements has created a complex and evolving landscape that challenges traditional perceptions of the Sahara as a static, unchanging environment. One of the primary drivers of Sahara's greening is climate change, which has led to shifts in weather patterns and an increase in rainfall in certain parts of the region. Climate models and satellite data indicate that the Sahara has experienced more frequent and intense rainfall over the past few decades. The increased rainfall is largely attributed to changes in atmospheric circulation patterns, including the strengthening of the West African monsoon. Also, the transition from El Niño to La Nina likely affected how far north the intertropical convergence zone moved. This monsoon system brings moist air from the Atlantic Ocean into northern Africa, where it converges with dry desert air, resulting in precipitation. While the overall amount of rainfall remains relatively low compared to other regions, even small increases can have a significant impact on vegetation growth in arid environments like the Sahara. Human activity is another factor contributing to the greening of the Sahara. Over the past few decades, efforts to combat desertification and improve agricultural practices in the region have led to an increase in vegetation cover. Programs such as the Great Green Wall Initiative, launched by the African Union in 2007, aim to create a 7,000-kilometer-long belt of trees and vegetation across the Sahel, stretching from Senegal in the west to Djibouti in the east. This ambitious project is designed to halt the advance of the Sahara Desert and provide sustainable livelihoods for local communities. In addition to large-scale reforestation efforts, local farmers and communities have adopted more sustainable land management practices, such as agroforestry and water harvesting techniques. These practices help retain moisture in the soil, reduce erosion, and promote the growth of trees and crops. As a result, areas that were once barren are now experiencing a resurgence of vegetation, contributing to the greening of the Sahara. The greening of the Sahara has important ecological implications for the region's biodiversity and ecosystems. As vegetation returns to areas that were previously devoid of life, it creates new habitats for a variety of plant and animal species. This resurgence of biodiversity could have far-reaching consequences for the ecological balance of the region. The reappearance of vegetation in the Sahara provides critical habitats for a range of species that were once common in the region. For example, grasses, shrubs, and trees offer food and shelter for herbivores such as antelope, gazelles, and camels, which in turn attract predators like lions, cheetahs, and hyenas. Birds, insects, and reptiles also benefit from the increased availability of food and shelter contributing to the overall diversity of the ecosystem. While the greening of the Sahara offers opportunities for native species to thrive, it also presents challenges in the form of invasive species. As vegetation expands, it can create conditions that are favorable for non-native plants and animals to establish themselves in the region. These invasive species may outcompete native flora and fauna, disrupting the balance of the ecosystem and threatening local biodiversity. As for the people who live in and around the region, for centuries, the Sahara has been home to nomadic tribes, pastoralists, and small-scale farmers who have adapted to the harsh conditions of the desert. The return of vegetation presents both opportunities and challenges for these communities. As areas of the desert become more hospitable to plant growth, farmers may be able to cultivate crops and raise livestock in regions that were previously unsuitable for agriculture. This could help alleviate food insecurity, 
where millions of people are affected by chronic hunger and malnutrition. In addition, the expansion of vegetation could create new economic opportunities for local communities, such as sustainable forestry, agroforestry, and ecotourism. With this, the demand for water is likely to rise as agricultural activities expand, putting additional pressure on already limited water supplies. The greening of the Sahara could also lead to changes in migration patterns and land use, potentially sparking conflicts over resources. As previously uninhabitable areas become more fertile, there may be an influx of people seeking to settle and farm the newly greened land. This could result in competition for land, water, and other resources, particularly in regions where land ownership is unclear or disputed. As the Sahara continues to evolve, it will be essential for scientists, policymakers, and local communities to work together to ensure that the region's transformation is sustainable and beneficial for both people and the environment. In the broader context of global climate change, the greening of the Sahara highlights the dynamic nature of Earth's ecosystems. By studying and understanding these changes, we can gain valuable insights into how to adapt to and mitigate the impacts of climate change on a global scale.